Yo, what's up and welcome back to another video. Today is an exciting one because we're doing something that I love to do and what I originally started this channel with, stretching. Now, if you didn't know already, my name is Franco and I work as a physical therapy tech in the army. Also, I got a new desk. I spend my day teaching soldiers how to do stretches and exercises to help them deal with pain and injuries. I wanted to start this channel to combine what I do for work with my love for gaming. When it comes to pain caused by gaming or spending a lot of time at your desk for work, one of the key factors in that pain is your desk. Ergonomics is not a one size fits all thing and the way your desk is set up needs to be specialized for you. When you use a traditional desk, you can do this by adjusting your seat or monitor height. You can also use things like footrests, but one thing will always be a constant. You'll still be sitting. Ideally, you want to be able to alternate between sitting and standing, and that's where adjustable standing desks come in. In usual fashion for my videos, I have a lot of information that I want to share with you, and I want it to be as convenient as possible for you. So here we go. First, we're going to discuss the health benefits of using a standing desk. Then I'm going to tell you some tips that help you transition to using a standing desk. I'm going to teach you some stretches that'll help you if you're having any pain, and then I'm going to show you some items that you can get with your desk to help you with this new change. It's a lot of information, so let's get into it. But before we do that, I want to be as transparent as possible with you. I've used a standing desk at work for a couple of years, but I didn't have one at home. I wanted to bring this information to my audience, so I started emailing companies, telling them what I do here and how I'd like to educate people on the benefits of a standing desk for their pain and overall health. One company responded to me immediately and was willing to help me create this video. That company is Uplift Desk. They didn't pay me to make this video and they aren't sponsoring it, but they do like what I do here and they were willing to send me a desk for free. The willingness to support a small channel like mine means a lot, so Uplift Desk. Thank you very much. They didn't even ask me to review the desk, but I do plan on doing a video review of it pretty soon. But the fact that they sent it to me for free will have nothing to do with what I say about it. Okay, so the first question that we need to answer here is how does a standing desk help? There's a lot of research, which I'll link in the description below, that supports the use of a standing desk. They help increase your energy by improving your circulation, which will reduce your need for caffeine. You can lose weight by standing more because you burn more calories standing than you do sitting. You can also increase your focus and your overall mood. But the benefit that resonates most with me is decreasing pain in your back, neck, shoulders, and even your wrists. The most common criticisms of gaming by people who just don't get it is that you should stand up, be more active, get outside, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay, I get it. Just because you game a lot doesn't mean that you don't do anything else. And to add to that, some people make their living by gaming, whether they stream or compete. And for the non-gamers out there who work in an office sitting in front of a computer, the same thing applies. A standing desk allows you to get up, get moving, and get active while you game or work at a computer. Should you get up and step away from the desk from time to time? Yes, but can you extend the amount of time doing what you love or need to do by switching positions? Also yes. But you can't just jump right into it. If you've ever tried to fix your posture, then you know how it can feel when you try to immediately change something that you've adapted to. If you told me to sit up straight one day, I'd probably tell you by the end of the day just how sore my back is. The same thing is gonna happen if you just start standing at your desk all the time. There is a right and wrong way to transition to standing while you game or at the office. You wanna introduce this new habit with incremental sessions of standing that increase over time. At first, you wanna alternate between sitting and standing. Spend 30 minutes sitting, then 30 minutes standing. Standing. Once this becomes easy, start increasing the amount of time that you spend standing. Eventually, work your way up to being able to stand for an hour, then sit for 30 minutes. Now, I know that standing for an hour may not seem like a lot, and you may be able to do it right from the beginning, but if you introduce something new like this, your body may not have time to adapt, and even though you can physically do it, you're causing yourself more pain in the long run. If you're a streamer, then you can integrate this alternating sitting and standing into your stream with channel points. I recently made a video on how to do that, so if that's something that interests you, go check it out. If you start feeling pain in your feet or shoulders or anywhere else, switch back to sitting until the pain subsides. But before you do that, consider doing some stretches first. In my previous videos, I focused on stretches that you could do while sitting because I wanted them to be easy to do and incorporate into your regular gaming routine. For these stretches though, we're gonna be standing up for the most part and we're gonna try and incorporate the desk wherever we can. These stretches will increase the amount of time that you can spend standing and they're gonna improve your overall health. When doing these stretches, you should move into each position slowly. You should never be bouncing into a stretch. Stretching can be painful, but it should never be a sharp stabbing pain. And if you do feel that, then you need to back off the stretch and slow down a bit. You should be able to hold these stretches for 30 seconds to a minute comfortably. But if you're not there yet, don't feel bad. This is something that you need to work on over time. I'm gonna start at the bottom and work my way up because most likely the first place you're gonna feel pain 
is your feet. You have a large piece of connective tissue running across the bottom of your feet called plantar fascia. And standing for long periods of time can actually aggravate this part of your foot and cause something called plantar fasciitis. So it's a good idea to stretch and massage this part of your foot. Grab onto your big toe and slowly pull it back. Now, if you have a tight plantar fascia, this might feel like enough. But if you want to push the stretch even further, take your thumb or a massage tool and slowly rub along the bottom of your foot. This will probably hurt like hell, but it's totally worth it. Spend some time doing this to both of your feet. The other way we can work our plantar fascia is with a hard ball, such as a lacrosse ball. You can get these super cheap online and I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in getting one yourself. Place the ball under your foot and roll your foot on it. Do this slowly and experiment with applying pressure for the spots that are really tender. Moving up the chain, the next thing we're gonna stretch is our calves. Now I feel like most people have probably stretched their calves at some point in their lives, but not many people know that there are two different parts of your calves that you can stretch. The first one, and the one that people are probably most familiar with, is propping your leg up on something like a wall, the leg of your chair or desk, or anything really, straightening your leg out and leaning forward. If you do this properly, you should feel it in the large upper portion of your calf. Well, Large for most people. If you skip leg day, well then you're gonna feel it in the small, underdeveloped portion of your upper chicken leg. We're gonna make one small change that's gonna completely change the area of the calf that we're stretching. From the same starting position, what I want you to do is bend your knee. Once you've bent your knee, go ahead and lean forward in the same way, but this time you should feel the stretch at the lower portion of your calf, closer to your ankle or Achilles. Moving up the leg, the next thing that we're gonna stretch is our hamstring. Now I've shown you how to do a hamstring stretch in the past, but it was while seated. Today we're gonna learn how to do it standing up. If you ask someone to do a standing hamstring stretch, a lot of people will do something that looks like this. You don't need to curl your back down like that, and you you shouldn't. To do this stretch properly, we can place our foot in front of us on the ground, or if you want a more intense stretch, you can place it on your chair. I'd recommend that the chair is at a low height setting to start with. From here, regardless of which method you choose, you're gonna straighten out your leg and hinge forward at the hip. Notice my back is straight when I do this, not curling forward. That's how yours should be too. If you do this properly, you should feel it in your hamstrings, which if you didn't know, is the back of your thigh. Next up, I'm gonna show you how to do a hip flexor stretch, and this part of your body can get really tight if you spend a lot of time sitting. A tight hip flexor can also cause lower back pain, so it's a good idea to take care of it. For this one, we're gonna use our chair again. Place one knee on your chair. This is gonna be the side that we're stretching. Being careful not to let the chair get away from you, start rolling it backwards. Now our bodies are amazing at making things easier for us. Naturally, when you do this, your body's gonna start trying to lean forward because it's trying to avoid the stretch. Make sure you keep your upper body upright as you push your leg back, and you will definitely feel this in the hip flexor. We can't leave out the neck and shoulder, so this one will cover that, and it's super easy to do. You'll wanna adjust your desk so it's at the height of your hand. Grab onto the edge of your desk and lean away from it as you bend your neck to the side, as if you're trying to touch your ear to your shoulder. You'll feel this in your neck, your trap, and that shoulder. Now I was gonna leave this at five stretches, but I had to include this next one because it's something that's gonna help you with lower back tightness. Face the desk and lean forward at the hip and support the weight of your upper body on the desk with your arms. Once you get comfortable in this position, let your lower back sink down. It'll feel almost like you're pushing out your chest. Very simple to do and definitely helps with lower back fatigue. Using a standing desk will go a long way towards improving your pain and overall health. These stretches will help you push that even further. But there are a couple things that I'd recommend getting to improve your standing desk experience. And the first one is an absolute must have. A desk mat or an anti-fatigue mat, in my opinion, is totally mandatory. It's a soft mat that you stand on, not really revolutionary, but it makes standing at your desk much more comfortable. When I spent a lot of time standing on it and walked away from the desk, I actually asked my wife if our floors had always been this hard. I'm gonna have to buy a few hundred of them just to line the floors of my apartment. Uplift sells a few of these and some of them look pretty cool, but I just got the simple one. It also has a heel hook so that you can move it with your foot instead of having to reach down with your hands. I'd also highly recommend mounting your monitors on arms. This will allow you to position your monitor into the optimal position. The proper height is probably not gonna be the same for sitting as it is for standing, and being able to move it quickly is ideal. Gaming on a standing desk does take some time to get used to because you have to find the ideal height for both your desk and your monitor. Ideally, you want it to replicate the muscle memory and position of your sitting setup. Proper aiming in games is highly reliant on consistent positioning of your arms and your head. So experiment with it until you find your perfect setup. If you're standing for a long time and you feel like your back is starting to get sore, another item I'd really recommend is a Theracane. It does wonders for being able to pinpoint massage parts of your back. They're super cheap and I always keep one close to my desk. They allow you to press on your back exactly where you want with exactly how much pressure you'd like. If you've used one before, then you know how valuable they can be and if you haven't, just 
take my word for it. The next items are not really mandatory, but they may help the fidgeters among us. Rogue Fitness makes a fidget bar that you can place under your desk that allows you to swing your foot back and forth. It looks really nice. I don't have one, but I will say it's kind of expensive for what it is. Uplift makes similar items called motion boards or rocker boards. They accomplish the same job, but in different ways, and they may help people who feel like they can't stand still, like me. When I'm standing at a desk, I don't know what it is, but I cannot stand still. You can see examples of my inability to stand still on my stream on Twitch, where I stream three days a week. Come by, say what's up, and ask me questions about standing desk, or join the Discord and ask me there. Or do both. Please, do both. Thanks again to Uplift for sending me this amazing desk and expect a review of it soon. Until next time, do all that YouTube stuff so you don't miss the next video, and I will see you later. Peace. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>